So Nigeria is one of the world's significant fashion industries. And of course, fashion brands have proven that their works can actually put them on the international map. Today on SME Up, we take a look at one of these few ladies who are significantly doing us proud, both as Nigerians and as Africans as a continent. Join me as I welcome Mrs. Ibijoke Shalangwa, the creative director, the Africa brand. Thanks for joining us on the show. Thank you for having me. All right, so looking at the industry, you've been in the industry for quite a while. Yes, yeah, since and, 2016. Um, since 2016, roughly eight years or thereabouts? Six years. Oh, six years. Yes. All right, so um, if you look at the industry, you find out that there's virtually no street you move around where you wouldn't find some fashion houses, whether two or three, as the case may be. Now, the issue right now is people venture into this business or into this space simply because of the profitability that comes with the business. Whereas to some, well, it's one of those businesses that easily gets acceptance, especially with regards to patronage and people, you know, accepting your brand. For you, what has been the motivating factor? Okay, um, what inspired the creation of Africana brand was the fact that we actually wanted to start off with, as a children's brand. Okay. Now, I'm so much in love with African print. I love African print. I like to um, combine African print to make um, modern styles and modern trends and all that. So one of those days, I wanted to make something really nice for my... I wanted to get something really nice for my daughter. And I thought about it. I, wanted to, I didn't have the time to go to Taylor to go and buy fabric and all that. So I, I wanted to buy something for my daughter in, in African print. But I noticed that there was like a like a blank space there do you understand so i wanted to get like something that will match wanted to get like matching outfits and i didn't see it as a then it wasn't as common as it is now then we didn't have so many people into into sewing african wears then you know most people always looked at it like ankara is basically for traditional wears you only wear for your hair so I had to create something from her and I thought about it, that could be an avenue for me to start up because I'm, I, I want to be able to cover up that blank space where people can, don't have to go to the tailors, they don't have to worry about tailors, they can just come and get ready to wear beautiful, unique Afri African um, dresses. And that was how it started. So I started, my baby was my model, I said then she was like two years or thereabouts. So she was the model and we kicked off from there. From there, most people, after buying children's clothes, they wanted something for themselves as an adult. We moved in. All right, so yeah. you, you realize, based on what you just said, that there was this vacuum, so to speak, yes. especially with regards to having, you know, a fashion designer that could cater to, you know, dresses for children. Yes. Now, um, what was your entry barrier at that time? What, what was it that you wanted to have a niche on in that value chain? I needed um, to create a brand Okay, that was kind of unique. Brand. Okay. A brand that, you know, when you see our outfits, all you want to say, wow, is this Ankara? Like I told you earlier on, a lot of people have this mentality that Ankara is only for traditional wear. I wanted to kill that notion. Okay. I wanted people to realize that Ankara is African um, fabric. Just the same way you have cotton used to make anything. You think mm. where you have, this is African um, pride, our culture, our heritage. And that was why I said, I said, okay, we are going to use it to make the westernized trends, what people really love. Do you understand? But this time around, people are doing it with um, their culture. They are doing it with their heritage. Do you understand? Something that brings them back home. And that was how we um, moved along. So we wanted to create something unique, something versatile, something that um, will bring out the confidence in you, bring out the African in you, anywhere you are in the world. If you wear Africa, trust me, you're going to stand out. Now, I will still go back to what I said yeah. about niche in the business because you can't just find yourself everywhere in the no, business. No, 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 so for you, was it when you realized the vacuum, that gap, especially with what you realized was something that needed to be addressed? For you, was it about creating the design, conceptualizing the design, or was it about getting the design, sewing, or marketing it, at what level do you want to have that niche for yourself? Was it just cre creating the design on its own and give someone to sew, or what exactly do you want to achieve from that? The truth about it, for, for us, we want you to know that, um, the, okay, the niche that we went into is 
combining Western world and the African world and bringing it together. So who, con who conceptualizes the design? I do. What informs your design? Where do you okay. get your inspiration well, from? Well, okay, my inspiration comes from, from Africa, from our patterns, from, you know, what, so most times when I see the fabric, okay. the style comes, the okay. design comes. Okay. So my, my, my design is inspired by our culture, our heritage, um, is inspired by Africa itself. Inspired by the things I know that people love. Things is also inspired by trends. Okay. Yes. So when I see the trend for the year, most times the trend for twenty twenty three is already out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. As a fashion designer, you know that. Okay. So if you look at those um, areas, you can those things can give you inspiration to create a, a design. Okay. Do you understand? Yeah. All right. So there are challenges in every facet or phase in one's life or endeavor. For you at that point in time, you needed to be able to accomplish or establish something because you've experienced the yes. gap. Now, what were those challenges and how did you deal with them? Okay, um, the f one of the biggest challenges I had back then was um, trying to convince a lot of people that Ankara is not only one to burial. So a lot of people, when you design something, people don't understand or why um, they should buy Ankara. You hear people say, I don't wear Ankara. And it was a lot of people, and you are amazed because this is, this is us. This is who we are. This is our our own. So you 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 rather wear cotton? I know cotton is also cotton in Africa. I know, but as in you rather wear um, the Western designs than wear your own in pride, you know. So one of the, that was one of the, our biggest challenges then. So it's reduced sales somehow, but you know as time went on, um, when people start to see Rihanna wear Ankara. Beyonce we Ankara, everybody now wanted to, oh, Ankara can be fun, it can be nice, it can be pretty, it can be beautiful, yeah. So another um, challenge we face sometimes could be staffing. You know, um, this business is handwork. So at a time, you get maybe a staff that already you're used to doing the thing, decides to go on his own. Getting another, another person can be challenging and all that. Staffing is, 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 is one of the challenges we face. We also face the issue of no lights. Our work definitely is light, light, light. We need light to function, you know? So um, in Nigeria, one of the biggest problems is light. All so right, so we're gonna, we're gonna touch you know, more on those uh, challenges yeah. that you mentioned. But I think I can relate with what you said earlier on about the fact that you had a challenge, especially selling African fabrics to Nigerians because the mindset was, I don't have you know, funerals to attend. Mm -hmm. I want to attend where people enjoy, so why will I wear Ankara? I used to have a guy who, you know, barb, you know, barb some you know, customers who usually come mm -hmm. to the barber shop, and they're like, everything you have in your wardrobe is all about Ankara. You have one Ankara for one particular barrier. So it, it looks like a mockery to him. Yeah. So I can relate with that. But then, now looking at the fact that you have gone past that, now it's all about, the challenges which you mentioned electricity how have you been able to cope with that how much does it cost you mm. to run on fuel or diesel as the case may be on a weekly i was told that diesel now is like almost 900 naira per liter okay we run a very big generator here and um, we run on diesel and i must say and i must tell you the truth it is very very challenging the amount we spend on diesel every day. Um, I can't really tell you how many liters of diesel we use a day, but I know we spend... On an average, how much yes, do you spend average, daily? We spend maybe um, 20,000 naira. Daily? Trust me. Yes. And you run six working we run, days or yeah, we run five working days? Six working days. Wow, that's a lot. That's a lot on that light. Now imagine we had constant light. That would save a lot of designers so much, so, so much. All right, so we're talking about challenges, right? Okay. And um, we'll come to that, especially with regards to power, okay. how much it costs you and all of that, which you just mentioned earlier. But my question to you is, what is your, what's your thoughts about funding? Because for every entrepreneur, I mean, eight of 10 entrepreneurs will tell you I need money. Is it to get this or get that, to get started as a business owner? How does that speak to you? Was funding an issue to you at, when you started? Yes. 
So, okay. so when I started, definitely every word you wants to start start up big. But you, for me, I started up. Will I say small? Okay. Yes, I think I started up with um, like I said, started making for my baby first. So when I make for her and someone likes it, they pay. Then I use the money for the cost and then keep the profit. And that was how it's been going. Okay. So, um, but definitely I desired to have a store. I desire to have machines. I desire to have all those things. And all those things cost a lot of money. All right. So, entrepreneurs need funding. It's okay, so at that thing. level, at that level where you realize that, okay, you've got to start with what you had, which was just doing stuff for babies, um, that also involve some level of capital. Yes. You would agree with me. How did you access funding? Like I said. Did you access funding from an institution, a financial no. institution, no. friends or relatives? So, like I said, I use people's money to produce because they pay before I do it. So, it so when they pay, okay. we buy fabric. I didn't have tailors then, so I had. I used to go to the Yaba market to sew. Okay, so that means at that point in time, you never had your sewing machine? No. Okay. So we had tailors, you have tailors in Yaba that sew for, let me Maybe one thousand, one five. Okay. So it's all part of the money you charge. Okay. You take it out. You take out money for fabric. You take out money for everything. They who, sew it. Who sketches the design? I do. Okay. So you sketch the des You receive orders. Yes. Sketch design and then take, take it, it to, to the. Yaba. Okay. They sew it for me. Okay. They do everything. Okay. And I bring it home. Just check the do the quality control myself. It was a one month thing then. Okay. Do the quality control myself and then I send it to the customer. Mm -hmm.